Okay, so this is the final video uh, in our uh, selection. Uh, this is all to do with uh, shopping. Okay, uh, the issue with the, the issue of shopping again. There's two ways you can go with the exam. More commonly, it's a case study about how shopping patterns have changed in an area. You can get. Uh, smaller questions. I think the key idea is, you know, using this and this idea of an urban model is appreciating where different sorts of shops are found. Okay, so if we think of the CBD, we think of somewhere like Lincoln High Street, for example. We know that the shops there are our brand stores, our chain stores. Okay. Your Marks and Spencers, your Jack Wills, your River Islands, and so on and so forth. They can locate there, as we've said before, uh, because they can afford the higher land values that come with locating in the city centre. So shopping in the CBD is very much all about your brand name stores. As you move out to like the inner city, somewhere like Monks Road, for example, you start to see sort of corner shops, small scale like general stores, maybe independently owned like news agents. You can often obviously find takeaways. You may find small independent shops, maybe like a hardware shop or like a second hand store or something like that. Usually much smaller shops, much smaller units because the land is much cheaper um, and they are there mainly for convenience, okay? There's a historical angle obviously, you know, you have your road of terraced housing and usually at the end of that row of terraced housing there might be a shop of some sort because that's where people would have previously shopped prior to obviously the growth of supermarkets and so on and so forth, okay? As we move out to the suburbs, um, you get what are called parades of shops. So if you think of the forum that's out on Newark Road, where you've got a nice little row of shops, and you've got estate agents there, you've got bakeries, you've got dry cleaners, you've got post offices. Again, we're sort of talking, because we're in the suburbs, to try and obviously reduce the need for people to drive all the way to the city centre for, say, convenience goods, things that they need every day, then obviously having those parades of shops means that they only have to go a short distance rather than have to travel into the city centre. And then finally, on the rural urban fringe, that's where we've seen the growth of our supermarkets, the growth of our very large supermarkets. Think of somewhere like Waitrose that's on the outskirts of Lincoln. Think of like Tesco on Rugby Road, um, you know, very close to the rural urban fringe. And obviously they're okay there because there is the space to build very large stores, the land is cheaper because it's on the rural urban fringe, and often, particularly in the 21st century, accessibility isn't a problem. There are usually like uh, bypasses and dual carriageways that go around the edge of cities that make it easier to access uh, our supermarkets. We also see um, like business parks and retail parks, okay? So for example, although Valentine Retail Park is on Triton Road, it Imagine something like that, but on the outskirts of the city. Okay, so on the outskirts of the city, we maybe go back to our brand and chain stores, but we're talking much larger stores, and also stores like furniture stores, like Carpet Right and SCS, etc., locating on business parks at the rural urban fringe. So point number one is, be aware of what shops you find in each area of the city, and be aware of the reasons why those shops actually locate there. The, the, the sort of second trend really is like how the pattern of shopping has changed. So basically, you know, you had a fairly simple hierarchy. Originally, you used to go to the city centre to find your large number of, of, of uh, like single corner shops or small groups of shops at the bottom, okay? Or let me rephrase that. Your city centre would have been the place where everyone went for all their goods, working your way down to your small shops, okay? So it's still a little bit like now. And if you wanted like a specialist or a consumer good, such as furniture, such as electrical goods, such as clothing, you would most likely go to a big shop in the city centre. Okay? These days, you don't need to do that because you can shop online, because you can visit those large retail parks on the rural urban fringe. So that's an idea of what has changed. People don't need to travel into the city centre for everything. Okay? And still... Our everyday convenience goods such as bread, newspapers, daily groceries were in small shops serving the local community. So those small shops that are in our inner city areas and in our suburbs, you know, yes they still exist today, but they would have been the place where everybody went to buy all of their convenience stuff. So if you're talking about what's changed, okay, it's really the fact that um, we have 
an issue about things like parking in the city centre mean that less people are likely to travel there all of the time, less frequently. Again, we've got like transport links such as motorways make some places more accessible, so we see a growth of those retail parks on the outskirts of cities. Uh, we see like a change in the type of shops and what they sell. So petrol stations that sell food in conjunction with small food stores. So for example, a lot of the petrol stations in Lincoln are done in like are linked to uh, the Lincoln Chicago. So you go in, you buy your petrol, but you can also do like a little bit of shopping, okay? Uh, spa, as I say, we often find that spa has been linked to petrol stations, etc. We see travel agents, chemists and opticians are now found within supermarkets. Think of Morrison's on Tristan Road. Also think of areas like uh, shops, um, a little bit like Asda, obviously, in North Highcombe, that's got that like, little photo shop in there. Um, so you do get like other services being offered, as well as just being able to go and do your food shop. Uh, new supermarkets and retail parks, like we've said, and shopping centres, your out-of-town shopping centres, your Trafford centres, your meadow halls, for example. And also, uh, an influx of things like farmers markets, so a change in people's approaches, wanting fresh produce, being unsure of how good the quality of uh, fruit and veggies and stuff, and like meat is in the supermarkets, they prefer to buy it you know, on, a, on a more local scale. Uh, and also... An increase in the popularity of car boot sales could be another point that you could bring in. So your key case study then is obviously change in retail provision. Again, we go to the city of Sheffield and basically our, our change in retail provision is a move from the city centre um, to uh, Meadow Hall. Okay, that's like that's your key change that's happened. Is people more people tend to shop in Meadow Hall than going and visiting Sheffield City Centre. And um, the reasons. But obviously, again, it relates to this idea of it's easily accessible, it's reached by the M1 motorway, there's hundreds of car parking spaces, so it ensures shop shoppers can stay for longer periods of time. It's free parking as well, you don't have to pay like you do in the city centre of Sheffield. Uh, over 280 shops and services, it's not just somewhere where you can go and shop, it's got a cinema, it's got places where you can eat, it's got... Um, other services like uh, a crash, for example, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, it's easier to bring in goods and to stock to and stock to Meadow Hall uh, from a business point of view because again, it's easily accessible. Okay, uh, it's got its chain stores like Debenhams and Marks and Spencers and Next, and um, they have chosen to open there because again, the land value is less. It costs less to rent space in Meadow Hall because it's on the uh, the edge of Sheffield or approaching the edge of Sheffield and therefore the rent is cheaper. Okay? And then how does it attract customers? How does it, you know, how is it sustainable in a way? Is Meadow Hall a sustainable like shopping chain? Well yes it is because it continues to advertise on social media, uses Twitter, uses Facebook, uses YouTube, uses things like reward cards, uh, posts information, news and offers on its website, it's developing a smartphone app and then also a 20 million extension because the land is available, again sustainable because it's built on brownfield land, so further extensions are happening to make Meadow Hall even bigger. So really, remembering the key change is a move away from the city centre because the problems that exist in the city centre, congestion, car parking charges, having to go from place to place, to uh, a shopping experience where everything is under one roof, it's easy to get there, you're not queuing up to get in, you don't have to pay for parking, um, it's easy for families to go to because there are other services like the crash, etc. Okay, uh, and therefore making the whole shopping experience easy, but make sure you are aware of how Meadow Hall attracts new customers because those points there are what makes Meadow Hall sustainable. Okay, lovely.